What is good, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Bible with the Daily Dabber. Last time, Bible chapter Z, we looked at chapter 21 of Numbers. Arad destroyed. But today, we'll be looking at chapter 22 of Numbers. Balak summons Balaam. Then the Israelites traveled to the plains of Moab and camped along the Jordan opposite Jericho. Now Balak son of Zippor saw that all the Israel had done to the Amorites and Moab was terrified because there were so many people. Indeed, Moab was filled with dread because of the Israelites. He was the first full dread. Huh? The Moabites said to the elders of Midian, The horde is going to lick up everything around us. As an ox licks up the grass of the field, Bitch done! So, Balak, son of Zippor, who was king of Moab at the time, sent messengers to summon Balaam, son of Beor, who was at Pithor, near the river Euphrates. It is native land, Balak said. A people has come out of Egypt. They cover the face of the land and have settled next to me. Now come and put a curse on these people because they are too powerful for me. Perhaps then I will be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. For now I know that whoever you bless is blessed and whoever you curse is cursed. The elders of Moab and Midian left, taking with them the fee of divination. When they came to Balaam, they told him what Balak had said. Spend the night here. So Balaam said to them, I will report back to you with the answer the Lord gives me. So the Moabite officials stayed with him. God came to Balaam and asked, Who are these men with you? Balaam said to God, Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, Send me this message. The people that has come out of Egypt covers the face of the land. Now come and put a curse on them for me. Perhaps then I'll be able to fight them and drive them away. But God said to Balaam, Do not go with them. You must not put a curse on these people because they are blessed. The next morning, Balaam got up and said to Balak's officials, Go back to your own country. For the Lord has refused to let me go with you. So the mobile officials returned to Balak and said, Balaam refused to come with us. Then Balak sent other officials, more numerous and more distinguished than the first. They came to Balaam and said, This is what Balak son of Zippor says. Do not let anything keep you from coming to me, because I will reward you handsomely. Because Ham I will reward you handsom han hands handsomely. And do whatever you say. Come and put a curse on these people for me. But Balaam answered them, Even if Balak gave me all the silver and gold in his palace, I could not do anything great or small to go beyond the command of the Lord my God. Now, spend the night here so that I can find out what else the Lord would tell me. That night, God came to Balaam and said, Since these men have come to summon you, go with them. But do only what I tell you. Balaam's donkey. Balaam got up in the morning, settled his donkey, and went up with the Moabites' officials. But God was very angry when he went, and the angel of Allah stood in the road to oppose him. Balaam was riding his donkey, and his two servants were with him. When the donkey saw the angel of Allah standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand, it turned off the road into a field. Balaam beat it to get back on the road. Then the angel of Allah stood in a narrow path through the vineyards, with walls on both sides. When the donkey saw the end of the lot, it pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against it. So he beat that donkey again. Then, then the angel lion moved on ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn. No, 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 sir. Either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the lot, it laid down under Balaam. And he was angry and beat it with a staff. <laughs> then the lad, what did the lad do? Open the donkey's mouth. Open the mouth. Oh, oh, oh. 
And he said to Peter, What have I done to you to make you beat me three times? Three, three times, three times! Balaam answered the donkey, You have made me a fool of me! If only I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you here and now. The donkey said to Balaam, I am not your own donkey, which you have always written to this day. Written to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? I'm a donkey. <laughs> no, he said. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes. <laughs> and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his sword drawn. So he bowed low and faced face down. The angel of the Lord asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey three times? I have come here to oppose you because your path is reckless. Before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If I had not turned away, I would certainly have killed you by now, but I would have spared it. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I did not realize you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now, if you are displeased, I will go back. The angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men. But speak only what I tell you. So Balaam went back with Balak's officials. When Balak heard that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him at the Moabite town on the Aram border, at the edge of his territory. Balak said to Balaam, Did I not send you an urgent summons? Why did you come to me? Am I not able to reward you? Well, I've come to you now, Balaam replied. But I can't say whatever I please. That's so, so bloody stonky speak at me. I must speak only what God puts in my mouth. Then Balaam went with Balak to Kiri, Kiriat Huzoth. Balak sacrificed cattle and sheep and gave some to Balaam and the officials who were with him. The next morning Balaam took Balaam, no, Balak took Balaam up to Bamoth Baal. And from there he could see the outskirts. Of the Israelite camps. Thank you all for listening. It's been a pleasure. I am Dodger Zabba, and this is. The-